Moses we see not only Moses he gets saved by the ark but Moses also goes into the palace and in the palace he develops you know a great life he becomes educated Moses becomes prosperous Moses has a powerful position in this in the society and if he's not going to be the next Pharaoh he's definitely going to stick around in the court and be somebody great and the Bible says that after, after some time when being there Moses saw the hurts and the pain that his people were suffering he came back to his palace and decided to resign and completely walk away from that he walked away and went to live with his own people we don't know exactly how things happened but we know that he lived with his own people until one of these times he went in and he attacked one of the Egyptians and the Egyptian died and Moses fled Egypt completely I believe that one of the things that we have to come into our life to the second part of Moses life and it has to happen in our life as well is that where we have to surrender our life to God now you may say well isn't salvation the same thing it's possible to be saved and not surrendered it's possible to be saved and have your life changed and not surrendered it's possible not to smoke and not, not be surrendered it's possible not to drink and not be surrendered it's possible to have integrity but not surrender it's possible to have money but not surrender a young ruler comes to Jesus and he had everything good young ruler he was a wealthy man and the Bible says he says I kept all of the Ten Commandments and Jesus said okay wow this is awesome and the Bible says Jesus liked him I think on the back of his mind Jesus was thinking man I wish all my disciples were like this <laughs> and Jesus said I want you to do something I want you to give everything away come and follow me and the Bible says he with sadness walked away from Christ and then disciples came to Jesus they said Jesus we sure don't have anything this guy has we have pretty rough past but we gave everything to follow you what are we gonna get and Jesus told his disciples he said you're gonna get reward in heaven but I'm gonna also use use you mightily on this earth you know what that means to me God does not really look for perfect people he does not use perfect people he uses surrendered people and sometimes the more perfect you think you are the less surrendered you'll be because your perfection my idea that I'm good becomes a stumbling block for humility and brokenness before God that's why God chose fishermen not because they had achievements not because they even had great moral life but because they had the flexibility in their character to say Lord if we're gonna follow you we're gonna leave everything behind that's why God was able to use Moses why because Moses from before he met God Moses already had in his character the ability to surrender walk away forgive everything for leave everything behind and God says that's kind of a man I'm gonna use Catherine Kuhlman says God doesn't use golden vessels wooden vessels bronze vessels she said God uses yielded vessels people who yield that's why you see all the time the people that God uses you look at them and you're like man but he did such a bad things you know one thing about these people it's not what they've done or didn't do it's their ability to leave everything behind and say God I surrender maybe you're not perfect here today none of us are perfect the only time we think we're perfect is when the neighbor behind us in the front of us is not doing things that we do that's the only time we think we're perfect God is not using perfect people he will use surrendered people he will use people who will give up their life for him he will use people and the biggest misconception I found that with myself is that we sometimes say when I get better then I will surrender when I change then I will really surrender to God when I quit smoking then I will surrender when I quit doing this then I will surrender when I finally find the man that I want to be with and get married then I will surrender when I finally finish the school and then I will not be busy I will surrender when I finally have a job pay off my debt then I will sacrifice and give I want to tell you something you first of all will never get there without surrender if you ever get there without surrender you will never surrender once you're there 
young young ruler told us this he arrived in that place and Jesus said now I want you to surrender and guess what happened he walked away being sad because surrender is your choice and that choice has to be made today don't wait for crisis don't wait for your heart to be broken don't wait for some bad thing to happen if God touches your heart and God calls you by name and says come and follow me drop everything like disciples and says I'm gonna follow you don't wait until your life gets shattered and broken for you to surrender. So many people say, I will do drugs, I will smoke, I will have broken relationships and then once I am on the bottom of the barrel, I will cry out to God. Most people I know who were on the bottom of the barrel committed suicide. Not cried out to God. And most, nothing happened when they cried out to God. Because you don't gamble and play games with God. When God calls you don't reject and then you do what you want to do. You when he calls you accept and then he changes your life. Jesus changed Paul's life not when Paul was in crisis. The Bible says Paul was running with his horse passionate to destroy Christians. He had no problems with his health. He had no problems in his finances. Paul's marriage wasn't falling apart. Paul's kids were not trying out on drugs. Paul had a great life, great reputation, connections with the authorities and God comes as Paul, you're headed in the wrong direction and Paul said two things, who are you Lord and the second question was this, what would you have me do? You can always know somebody's greatness by the kind of questions they ask. Most people would ask, why did this happen to me? Why did that happen to me? Those kind of people, that's good but the better question is God, who are you? what should I do and God says Paul the very people you're going to kill go to them for advice and they will tell you what you should do and the Bible says the moment they prayed for him Paul gets baptized and Paul didn't wait for six months to say well I need to get stronger I need to get stable before I start coming to prayer I need to get better before I start you know kind of really pressing in to start my home group I need to take some time the Bible says the next day Paul gets on the streets and starts preaching God with passion confuses people see do not wait when God touches your life and you say God I give to you my life don't wait for everyone to wait for six seven months to see change go hard after God and God will use you can somebody say amen commitment to God is what he's looking for not perfection even the God people uses are still not perfect. He uses them because they're committed. Because they are surrendered. Not perfect, not always holy, not always strong, not always everything in their life is right. But there's one thing you know about them. When there is Friday night prayer, they will be here. When there is Sunday morning service, whether I'm tired, weak, or I feel bad, I will drag myself over here. Why? Because once I made a deal with God that I'm going to serve Him, I'm going to serve Him. And no devil in hell is going to stop that. And no demon in hell is going to stop that. Why? Because they cannot temper once a man is committed. I remember listening to a man reading a book uh, by a man uh, named Bob Larson who has in his history has cast out, he said documentary, documented 30,000 exorcisms. And he says something very interesting. He says every exorcism that I've done and the studies he's done about people who are demon possessed. He says this is what I found. People who have a strong will and a strong commitment he says less likely to have an access or demons have access to them he said even if they commit sins that other people commit that cause demons to enter them he says those people who have a strong will means once they make a decision they stick with it he says somehow demons cannot enter them my friends be a person who lives their life surrendered people will make fun of you say oh you're not good you're not this let them say what they want to say but no one thing God is not looking for perfection he's looking for surrender he can always make surrendered people perfect but he can never make perfect people surrendered he will qualify the called but he doesn't always cause the qualified amen